So to work through the SQL material in the course, um, we're going to use the DB Manager, uh, which is a plugin that it installs natively now with uh, QGIS. Um, so if you're wanting to really get into doing SQL and large-scale data management, um, it's probably better to set up like a true client-server type architecture, you know, with something like PostGIS and PostgreSQL. However, there's a lot of overhead there. Um, so what I'm gonna, what I'm doing in this introduction is just using a geo package, um, and we're doing queries against that geo package, so we don't have to set up like a true like client-server architecture or PostGIS, PostgreSQL as a local host. Okay, so to get to the DB Manager, uh, you should have this database option here. Again, that's, it just installs natively. So you click on that and go to DB Manager. That'll open up the, the database manager. Uh, the next thing you need to do is actually connect to a database. And over here, you can see that there are a couple different options. So we have Spatial Light, which uses uh, SQLite, Geo Packages, which also use SQLite. We have Oracle and then PostGIS, which is basically on based on PostgreSQL, and then also virtual layers. So again, in this course, we're just going to use geo packages because it's simpler, um, and I'll provide those as part of the course material, both for your like assignment and then just the examples from the from the example module. So if I'm going to go into my list of geo packages here, I have a a bunch that I've been playing around with. And I'm just going to grab this US data, which is the one that I use in the example module. OK, and so if you click on that, you can see all of the different objects that are, um, or tables that are inside of that geo package. So um, I've got some point features, um, uh, some polygon features, some line features. There's a couple raster grids in there, which we won't work with for the spatial querying component. Um, and then there's also just some tables. So I have this table on internet access from the uh, American Community Survey and then this uh, state FIPS code kind of like lookup table. Okay, so that's, the, that's an example of the database. And again, if you have um, connected to that database, you should see it there in the list. If you need to add a connection, if you click here, you can do new connection and then connect to it on your local machine. And you'll need to do that once you download the, the data to use in the course. Okay, so to actually like start producing SQL statements, you want to switch over to this SQL window. And you gotta again make sure you're connected to a database. There we go. That's a little slow. Okay, so this opens up the SQL window. Note that you can save and load SQL. I'm gonna provide all my examples in just like a text file, so it's plain text. I'm just going to dump one in. We're not really discussing how to set these up, just more how to uh, do you know, to run one. Um, let's see what would be a good one. Let's do, we'll just do this one. Um, so I'm just going to copy this in. So this is SQL, a single SQL statement. So just what, what we're doing here real quick is we're selecting the centroid coordinates as well-known text. Um, from the, the county summary um, table, um, which, is, which are polygons, but we're only going to collect, select the or, uh, return results for ones that have a state FIPS code of 54, which is all the counties in West Virginia. Okay, so that's the statement. Again, if you want to build something from scratch, you can just type in here. Note that there is some um, tax code highlighting, which is helpful for... Um, you know, troubleshooting and just understanding your syntax. I also end in a semicolon, and I, I try to capitalize all of, like, the keywords, uh, which is considered kind of standard SQL. Okay, so to actually run that, we're going to hit Execute, and then it'll return back the results. So here we have 55 rows. That's how long it took to execute, and then we just get back this centroid table. So in here we have the well-known text that says it's a point, and then we have the xy coordinate for that centroid point. And then we have 55 because there's 55 counties in, in West Virginia. Um, the reason why it's labeled centroid is because we use this as statement here to provide an alias name. The reason why we're not getting back all of the, the columns is because we specifically just want, stated that we want that centroid value there. 
Um, if you just want to look at your data, so let's just delete this real quick, you can do a select and then asterisk, which means all the attributes are columns from, and then name a table. So let's do that county table again, county summary. And then we'll hit execute. And that just spits back basically the entire data set. So this is all the counties in the country. There's over 3,000 of them. And then there's a bunch of different attributes there. Okay, so I'm going to run one other. Well, first, let's go back to the prior query and run that again. All right, so let's say that you wanted to save this result um, out and actually have it pl plot to your map. So to do that, you can load the data um, and you can load the data into the map space there. There's some options for setting a unique value, what column is the geometry, um, you can provide a layer name. So if you click load here, that should load the data in. Um, this one we're just going to get a table. It doesn't understand that this is the geome column. If I put, um, actually, but let's see if this works. Do load. No, I'm still just returning a table. Um, so here we get a table output. So let's open it up real quick. And we can see it's just that centroid column. If you write the geometry out, you can get back actually a geometric feature. So let's do that with a, an example that actually spits back geometry. So let me find something here that won't take a long time to run. I'm just going to do, I'll just do a straight quarry um, as opposed to, let's see here. Yeah, let's do a, we'll just do a straight quarry without any of this, of the spatial components. Just grab this one. Uh, let's grab this one. Okay, so drop, I'm just again dropping in a quarry here. So um, what's going on here? We have we're selecting the name as county, and then the elevation median as elevation. So we're providing alias names, and then from this table, and we're only going to get back counties that have an elevation greater than a median elevation greater than 1,200 meters or less than 300 meters. So if we execute that, then that gives us back all of our counties. And you can see out of the over 3,000, roughly 1,900 of them had met, or met that quarry. If I load this into the map, we're just going to get back a table again. And that's because we didn't have it write the geometric information out to the table. Um, so it has to have that actually to actually create a spatial feature. Okay, so let's alter this so we get back our geometry. Okay, so I'm going to add in another column here. So we're going to do, um, let's see here, we want to do county underscore summary dot geom. And that should spit back the geometry as another column. So let's execute that. Okay, so now we have the geometry column. So now if we run this, do load, hopefully this won't take too long, we should get back, there we go. So now we have a spatial output that has the, you know, the attributes and also the geometry spit back to, to the map. Okay, so if you want to follow along with the examples in the module, which again I think is a good idea um, to actually execute the, the queries and and, and make sure you understand them and maybe try to alter them and see if you can get different results. Um, this is how you would do it. If you want to see your t resulting tables in the, in the map or the resulting spatial output in the map, you can use this load as new layer and load it in. Also note, just to end here, if you have a result that you'd like to save, once it's in the map space there, you can go to export, save feature as, and then export it out to some format like a shapefile or into a geo package or a geojson file or something. Okay, so again, I highly recommend following along with the examples, and this is also how you're going to do uh, your the lab or exercise associated with this SQL module.